Thank you very much, gentlemen. Great cast on the day. I am, in fact, joined by All Tech of Team Gravity, who just got a very nice victory over Cloud9 right out of the gate. I kind of want to step back to last week, however. You guys came out 0-2. What was kind of the mentality? What? 1-1. One, 1-1. One. One, one, one. Sorry, 1-1. One, one. What was your mentality coming out of that, and like, how are you guys going to repair it? Um, last week, we, we didn't really play that well. I think that we still had the land jitters, of course, but um, this week we practiced pretty hard. Uh, we didn't really know what they were going to play. Like We expected some of the picks, but we didn't know how strong they were because they're obviously training really hard. So I'm really glad that we got a game off them. And you, you seem much more confident now on this team. What's it kind of been like you for that, that transformation, moving from team to team now, different supports? How are you feeling now? And what's the season going to be like? I'm feeling like I can definitely do a lot more things on this team. Like, um, if, if I don't carry, then someone else will carry, you know? Um, and I think a lot of it just, Cop has helped me a lot, basically. Um, he's helped me improve, and I think he's, like, molding me into a team player, kind of. How much easier is it for you to kind of, like, receive that information and become a better player now? Um, it's easy because he used to be an AD player, so, like, Whatever, I, I respect him as a player um, as, and, as, and as a coach, and it's really easy for me to just take criticism and learn. Well, it definitely seems to be paying off as we just saw in the game. I want to touch on tomorrow for the last question. You guys are going to be playing Team Liquid now. Could be looking at a perfect record if they are able to take you guys out. What are you going to do to stop them? Um, today they looked really, really strong, but I think uh, we played really like slowly this game, so I think uh, we have a better strategy in terms of later game. So I think that can help us out. All right, Alltech, thank you very much for the interview. Best of luck in the rest of the split. We're going to throw it back to the analyst desk now to break down more on that game. Thank you, Riv. A uh, fantastic win there for Gravity. What I want to look at is a lot of some heady stuff here. Yeah. So we're going to jump right into our first replay, which is the early game map movements made by both teams. I was so impressed by this level one strategy from Gravity. and. It all basically started with this one deep ward. And then there's a series of conditionals that basically gravity do just right. So let's just start ruling this right now because Meteos tries to take the slow route around because they knew this ward is here so he doesn't get spotted by Grom. But obviously he doesn't want to waste time, so he does get spotted. That is immediately pinged. And this is the coolest part because move starts on his red buff, which is the weak side of the map. A risky start, but we're going to get to see this payoff huge. Gravity's bottom lane shows bottom, which basically tells you since they did Gromp that a four man dive is coming. And Cloud9 knows this. So Meteos wants to hit level three before that happens and run all the way down to the bottom lane. But this is why it's so cool is because Gravity is one full step ahead. By move going red to red, they automatically beat where Cloud9 started. And all of this was contingent on that very first ward. Once that happened, Cloud9 really didn't have many best decisions. The way Cloud9 plays this is it looks like on the, in the game that they're late to the bottom. But that's only because Gravity was so early to that dive. Because they got four people bottom before Cloud9 could get three, they're completely zoned off the turret. And they're also three buffed. Like everything went well for Gravity this, this early game. And it, it set them on a very good path in this game. And as we saw there, like it was really brilliant. We yeah. were so impressed by that start. Yeah, you can see all the minions there dying at the end, denying the CS from Rise, getting Altec that huge lead. And that's very unconventional in terms of what you do strategy wise. Because mm -hmm. usually you want a Rek'Sai level three for the dive. He blows his flash just to get the gap closed there to force out Rise. Overall, it was absolutely amazing, and I was really surprised that Lemonation on his classic Nautilus did not go for a strong side invade because yeah. he could have pushed Rek'Sai off of it, and he moved, knew it was safe because of that ward. Because as soon as he saw Lemonation there, he's like, oh, this is 100% going to work out, and Hauntzer does Raptors, wraps right around and comes down. Really, 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 really just premeditated great play, and it caught Cloud9 off guard. Yeah, I think uh, one important thing to recognize there is that any other... Uh, standard dive like that, they would have been there in time, yep. right? But as you pointed out, Rek'Sai skipping one camp, not not needing to go for that level three. And every time I see one of these dives where it's like four people are there and they got beaten to the punch and it's the three people on the outside have to just sit around, there doesn't seem to be, once you get to that point, a good choice. Because after that, you see like three people go like, oh, we have to do Raptors now and we have to try to gank mid. Yeah, basically what most teams do is they'll have three people down there and they'll just try and find a winner to sneak mm -hmm. under the turret. But it so easily ends in defeat, which is why it was technically the right play for Cloud9 to abandon that turret. But just because of the early game, it ended up just 
destroying them. Yeah, right. I don't think there's a, a right move at that point because it's like the right move was 45 seconds ago. Mm -hmm. yeah. And at that point, the gank mid is telegraphed, yep. so it's very easy for you know uh, Keen to walk right back up the lane, avoid that gank. Sneaky's getting the freeze up top, but that's you know it, it, at the end of the it, day, it's not enough. That CS differential that we too, saw so is like, not enough. Yeah. So at this point, as you mentioned, there weren't too many good decisions there for them at this point. Now we move further into the game. We're gonna jump into our next replay because this is Cloud9's attempt to even things up. Yeah, they had given up the previous 11 dragons to their opposition, five against TSM, four in the next game, and they were down 2-0 here. So Cloud9, they, they just wanted the dragon. But honestly, <laughs> because they were down so many early turrets, this was the only team fight that could actually get them back in the game. So I don't fault them too bad for trying this fight. It just had a low probability of working. Let's roll this clip right now uh, and basically see Cloud9 played this fight uh, decently, right? Balls is in the middle of the fight, not getting focused immediately. They get a good bit of damage down onto Keen, as we're going to see in a second. And it's basically just over committing on that one resource. Once he's Zonia's, instead of Cloud9 moving into the rest of the fight, you know, using the True Shot Barrage and the Victor Death Ray for the other people like Alltech, they don't even end up finishing Keen. Like that flash ended up turning that fight in some pretty monstrous ways. And once this happened, the game was practically. Yeah. The gold card as well that came in at the very beginning on Sneaky, which lined him up for the wild cards, forcing him yeah. back over the Dragon Wall, it meant that one of their most fed players and their consistent damage was entirely out of the fight. The only thing he attributed to that fight was the True Shot Barrage. Yeah, and you said they had a pretty low probability on cloud Nine side of winning it, but it was the highest probability they were gonna have for the rest of the game. Like Luden's Echo was completed. They were hitting okay. some spikes. They were down about 5,000 gold at that point. But the way that Gravity played that fight with their skirmishing composition, where like we have a Twisted Fate, we have a Sivir, we have all these champions that are really good in just 2v2, 3v3 brawly situations, they split them up and they make it so that the Sejuani ultimate is only good on one person because they're not close enough to capitalize on it. So they don't play into the hands of Cloud9's team fight. And that was, I thought, really brilliant shot calling there and execution of the fight. I also thought that Gravity's use of uh, Twisted Fate throughout the game was pretty solid, both in abusing uh, Incarnation in the mid lane, basically over and over and over again, using the TF on the way back when he thought he was safe to push one extra wave, but also to recognize which fights they should not take. Mm -hmm. Don't put themselves in a bad position uh, you know, for a team fight up against Cloud9, who's normally touted as you know, pretty solid in those, in those areas. Yeah, and... This was a very one-sided game in, in the land of gravity, and it feels very impressive because there's this aura of excellence around Cloud9. So anytime someone beats Cloud9 to that level, you're always kind of tempted to say they're great. And we will know more about this later, but there are, there are some things that are unquestionably good that gravity is doing. So last week, I just want to talk about Move briefly and his vision control. Last week, it didn't look like Move was doing very much in their games. But as far as junglers are considered, he had more wards placed and more wards killed than any other jungler in the North American LCS. And in this game alone, he killed 19 wards and placed 47. So on top of the other stuff he's doing, he is an incredibly proficient ward killer, as well as maintaining vision for his team, which I want to see develop throughout the rest of the split. Yeah. All right, fantastic stats to have even in losing matchups from the prior week. Well, Team Solomid and Impulse are setting up on stage and making final preparations for our third match. And we'll be bringing you that in just three and a half minutes. Stay with us. What do you do when your ear is like scratchy? You scratch it. Oh, scratch the headset? No, you take out that so you scratch your <laughs> ear. Need to lobby, please. The ultimate Zama Summoner Heal means another gold card will likely lock it in. Nice. nice. Push me. Kill goes to balls. Incarnation stays alive so far. Keen getting just evaporated. Pops the Zonia's Lemonation flashes out. I'm on rice. Rice, 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 Nice. But Lemonation gonna drop down way too quickly, and Keen's gonna find Balls with a gold card. Double kill for Hauser's Maokai. Balls goes down to Altec. Now the push on towards Medios and Lemon. At the same time, a triple kill for the new AD carry. Gravity in 35 minutes knocks down Cloud9. Improves to 2-1.